Hi everyone, welcome back to Hive Knits and Natters podcast with me, Lizzie, the maker behind Hive Knits. You can find me on Instagram as Hive Knits and on Ravelry as Hive Knits. If um, you're new here, then welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a knitter um, living in the north of England and I work as a doctor to fund my yarn habit, essentially. Um, so when I'm not doctoring, I am knitting, and I've also dabbled in a few knitwear designs as well. If you're um, a returning viewer, then hi, welcome back. As always, thank you so much for bearing with. I feel like I say this every single time. Um, sorry it's been a while. How are you? How is everyone? Um, <laughs> sorry if you can hear some background noise. I was going to introduce this in a minute, but let's just get it over with now. Um, my cats are alive and kicking this morning. I knew I wanted to film a podcast. Here we are. <laughs> this is Hugo. Um, I knew I wanted to film a podcast this, uh, this morning, so I've got a bit of time. So they were racing around this morning like nobody's business. Um, and I thought, right, I'll get all my notes ready, get everything prepared, get myself ready while they're snoozing when they finished racing around and I just timed it wrong because they had a great snooze, bless you. Um, they had a brilliant snooze but now they've woken up um, so I'm really sorry but I'm, we've got to work with what we've got so I'm just going to go with it unless anything absolutely disastrous happens. I think they're just inquisitive and they probably will chill out um, in a minute. So that's the cats. <laughs> If you're a returning viewer, you'll have met Molly on the last episode. Hugo was asleep, and now um, we've got the other way around. Um, so yeah, how is everyone? I don't think I've even said what episode this is. It's episode 18, but who's counting? Um, yeah, it's 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 been a hectic few weeks. I last filmed a podcast just after Christmas. Um, I filmed two videos I filmed a podcast and I also filmed what I'd made in 2022 um but since then I've changed jobs again <laughs> I feel like I'm always saying that I've changed jobs um working in a different GP practice and I've changed jobs for the last time in my training so no more change which is good um but it's always it's always um um, just tricky isn't it when when things change around so that's taken up quite a lot of time I'm also revising for um, an exam a GP exam um, and um, returning viewers will know that I am getting married this year so there's been a lot of wedding to do in free times as well which is absolutely not a chore but you know take time so that's my kind of rambly excuse as to why it's taken so long to get back here but here we are the plus side of all all of this is that i have actually been doing quite a lot of knitting um so i've got quite a lot to show um i've been doing quite a lot of knitting but not really like talking about it not really posting it not obviously not doing any youtube videos um and i i was trying to think about why that is and i was talking to some um of my knitting friends about this um about being like a bit a bit burnt out not from knitting but from like knitting social media and youtube and instagram and stuff and turns out we're all feeling similar way which is often the way isn't it when you think you're the only one um so actually it's probably been quite a good thing because i've been doing a lot of knitting but like for me rather than for any one or anything else. So um, we'll put a positive spin on it. But yes, it does mean I've got quite a lot to show. Um, finished Two finished objects, two whips that you haven't... Nah, one that you definitely haven't seen, one that you've seen in its infancy, and some acquisitions as well. Um, and I've just realised I've left one of the acquisitions upstairs, so I'll just go and get that shortly. Anyway, um, was there anything else I was going to say in my intro? I don't think so. 
Um, but yeah, hope everyone else is doing all right. Um, the end of the year is always, end and the beginning of the new year is always such a crazy time, isn't it? Um, there's so much to do, so much going on. I felt quite um, overwhelmed by so much content in terms of like the knitting YouTube and Instagram world as well, which is probably why my last podcast episode did not particularly well. And it kind of got me down for a bit, but then um, lots of people have said the same. So, and it's just a reminder that don't do it for like views and stuff. Do it because we enjoy it. And this morning I wanted to film a podcast. So here we are. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone's okay. Hope 2023 has started well. It's a tricky one. Various tricky things going on. But um, hopefully we can just sit and enjoy half an hour to an hour of knitting chat together. So I'm going to stop rambling. Can you tell I haven't had any coffee yet this morning? And let's do some knitting talk. Mm, I don't know that one. Thanks, Alexa. <laughs> Oh gosh, I feel very rusty, can you tell? Okay, so let's talk about finished objects. Um, so I have two finished objects and neither of them are technically for me, um, but I think I will steal both of them. <laughs> I'm wearing one of them. Um, this is not my sweater, this is uh, Pete, my partner's sweater, and I was meant to make it for him for Christmas, but um, Life got in the way a bit, and um, if you look back at previous episodes, we'll go into it in more detail. But I had to re knit this, um, I had to re knit several quite large bits of it because the fit was wrong, etc. etc. So this took a very long time. However, it is now finished. I finished it just after Christmas, um, and he loves it, which is great. I love it too, and I just love this colour. Like, Anything green is very me, but this dark green in particular. So um, I have stolen it for this episode to wear. I think I might also wear it for the rest of the day. And maybe I'll just uh, use it for myself as well. You know, sharing is caring. Um, but yes, this is the single malt sweater by uh, Max the Knitter and I made it for my um, partner, Pete. Uh, I think I made the fourth size, but I made some adjustments. Um, I changed the yoke depth a little bit. I think I added some length and some sleeve length um, to, to the pattern. But yeah, I'm really pleased with the result, as is he. It's in the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Slate Green, which gives this really lovely, um, like, dark green, but it is a little bit mild finish. Um, you can see the really nice texture here. Um, it's sort of like an Irish moss sort of thing going on with, um, obviously, the raglan detail, which, let me try and show you. You probably all know this sweater is everywhere carries on down the arm and into the rib of the sleeve cuff um, and yeah it's great two by two ribbing two by one sorry ribbing at the bottom which was interesting to try and bind off neatly but I think I did um, a reasonable job kind of invented my own um, amalgamated a few different techniques I'd seen to bind up bind that off is that focusing there you go. Yeah, because I just can't go back to a normal bind off now. I uh, just can't do it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm pleased with this. The only issue, not for me, but for Pete, is um, the neckline. You can see it sits on me, like, just fine. Uh, it's clever. It's got the short rows in the back. So the rib at the back is taller than the rib at the front. Um, I hope you can see that when I turn to a different. Um, 
the issue for him is that he kind of wanted it to sit a little bit higher up his neck um, and originally when I started it because it's top down it did but naturally with the weight of the, the sweater um, it's pulled out like a little bit um, and his is his main issue is that his t-shirts tend to sit like higher than mine I'm just wearing this with like um, a scoop neck t-shirt underneath but his like the fit of his t-shirts generally sit like higher up his neck and he doesn't like the fact that sometimes you can see the shirt there so um, not particularly enjoyable knees uh, because I redid various parts of this jumper but I want it to fit him because I want it. I want him to be able to wear it. Like he does wear it, and the first time he wore it, he wore a white t-shirt underneath, which just made it really obvious. But then when he wore it last weekend, he wore like a dark t-shirt underneath, and that was much better. However, I am considering whether I could try and unpick the cast on edge because it's top down. So this is the cast on edge here, and just add. We wouldn't need to add much just a few more rows to the neck I don't know <laughs> it's one of those things where you're like yeah I'll do that and it's just never top of the priority list but if it's going to make what's going on here if it's going to make the difference between wearing it and not wearing it I would want to do it so yeah maybe I should do that but otherwise we love this job <laughs> And I have commandeered it um, for the podcast today. So that is my first finished object since the last podcast. My second finished object was also a whip in the last episode. It's also for Pete, but again, I might nick it. Um, it is, ta-da, another Oslo hat. I say another, this is now the fourth one I've made. Um, and oh my word, this pattern is just everywhere, all over like... Instagram and knitting YouTube at the minute. I mean, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I did make one quite some time ago, and I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not going to be that person. But it's suddenly become a very, very popular, and for great reason. Like, there's a reason I've made four of these. I think it's a lovely pattern. I love the triple pointed brim and the crown decreases, and I don't need to show you it in huge detail because, like I said, it is everywhere. Um. This is Pete. This was one of Pete's Christmas presents. I put the yarn in his <laughs> stocking for him to open on Christmas morning, and he was very pleased. He hinted that he wanted a navy version. He's got a mustard version, and he hinted that he wanted one in this colour. So, what can I say? Girlfriend of the year. Um, and yeah, you can see this is knit in um, Lanagato VIP, which I've made all the Oslo hats in. And it's this lovely merino and cashmere blend in this navy blue. So I shall push it on for sake of completeness and then I shall take it off because it will probably mess my hair up. Um, but yeah, we love an Oslo hat. This one feels a bit taller than some of the other ones I've made. I don't quite know why because I didn't make it any different. Um, and the brim is folded properly. I don't know if it's stretched slightly in blocking but when Pete wears it you don't get this poof. Um, he must have a bigger head than me. Um, but yeah it's, it's very nice so I'll probably, probably nick this as well because you know I did make it. <laughs> um, so this is me decked out in the Christmas presents I made for somebody else. <laughs> so Give it, everyone, especially if you live with the recipient, because then you can also benefit. So that is my finished object. I was about to take this off as well. Don't know why, because that is my outfit. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Um, let's talk about whips. Let's talk about whips, baby. That could be a segment jingle. For the future yeah um right anyway so um the first whip i'm going to show you 
is something that you've not seen. How exciting. Um, a podcast exclusive. Um, when I finish this and the Oslo hat over Christmas, I'd done a lot of gift knitting. I'd knit this, I'd knit the hat, I'd knit the um, zipper sweater for my dad for Christmas. And I was just craving something for me and then just something kind of fun. Um, and on my, actually, I yeah, I changed my, my plan. So I had in stash some yarn, which I had earmarked for um, sweater number nine by my favorite things knit back. Um, and it had been my plan for ages and ages and ages to make that. It had been my pattern library for yonks. I talked about it loads. And then I just decided I didn't want to make that anymore. <laughs> I saw a few versions of sweater number 18 by My Favourite Things, um, inspired by my friend Caroline, Caroline's Knits. She made a beautiful pink version. And also Simona of Knit Yarns has made a lovely grey version. And I was just like, oh, that's a bit of, you know, with all the textured stuff, that'll be a bit of fun. Um, you know, and a bit of a challenge because I kind of presume that um, while she might be in a pattern repeat, it's obviously a, a different combination of knits and pearls to make the texture. So it's like, oh, this will be fun. Um, so I swatched and then I got started. And because it's on five millimetre needles on a sort of Aran weight, um, it went really quick. So I've finished most of the, well, I've finished the body, but I've not done the ribbon yet because I'm waiting because of the um, texture, which I'll show you. Molly, can you leave that? Molls? Thank you. It's just helping with the tripod. Hi. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, because of the texture, it kind of like, bunches up vertically so when it's blocked I think it will look a lot longer than it is currently so I'm gonna finish the sleeves do the same not do the ribbing block it um, and then see if we need to add any length to the body or to the sleeves so let me show you what I have oh dear lost again something so we have, here she is, this is the yarn that I'm using, you've seen me talk about this combo before, um, this is the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Soft Aqua, really pretty, I got this in their Ukraine Support Red Cross uh, donation which was a year ago now somehow, um, and then I'm also holding it with um, this really beautiful like baby blue mohair which is from uh, Sostra Nivrena and Pete bought this for me for Christmas last year. Um, so you can see they are slightly different tones. This is like the greeny end of the blue and this is very much blue. So together they have made Oh, let me just reset the focus. They have made this. <laughs> you see what I mean? It looks really short. It looks very wide and very short, but it is a drop shoulder, so it will look wide. Um, and because of the texture, that's what I was saying before, like that is definitely gonna stretch out. Um, so yeah, it will be quite different in length, I think, to what it looks here, but that's like a close up of the texture. It's really, really nice. Um, and I think, I hope you can, yeah, you can appreciate there, the combination of the mohair strand and the soft aqua. Like the blue stands out a lot more than I thought it would, which initially I wasn't sure about, but I actually think it's nice. Gives it a bit of depth of color. Um, so it's got this lovely, my favorite things, hallmark, Shoulder detail. Um, so I have actually, this is the recommended length of the body. Oops. 
obviously a fair bit shorter than this, but like I said, it hasn't got the ribbing and it's not a bit blocked. Oops. And um, I have started, so picked up one of the sleeves, as you can see there, made a little start. Um, that's the back. It's not um, very, it's very, it's similar construction to the sweater number 11, which I just finished. But the sleeves, I guess, maybe because of the texture, um, the sleeves don't have short rows. So I'm just intrigued to see what difference that makes in terms of the fit. Because in the sweater number 11, when you picked up for the sleeves, you did some. Hello. I'm just sharing the chair now. Um, we did some short rows here, which kind of brings the top of the sleeve out a bit more to kind of make it sit more like that than just than like that. Um, and this doesn't have it. I think you probably could have put them in if you wanted to, because um, there is a couple, there is a few rows of of stock in it um, before you start the texture again on the sleeves, but. I'm willing to just do to pattern and see what happens. So I'm really excited to get this, um, get these sleeves done. I don't think they'll take long uh, because this body didn't really take that long. And then block and see how much, if any, we need to add and then get the ribbing done. So I don't think that'll take me too long. So apologies, that's the first that you've seen of it. Haven't put this on Instagram yet. Um, and <laughs> it's like two thirds finished. But that's the way it goes sometimes, isn't it? You just gotta follow the dopamine and do what feels right. It's so pretty. I think it's gonna be lush. It's proper up my hello, up my alley um, colour wise. This one. So yeah, that is whip number one. I think that's everything I meant to say about it. Oh, I'm making the second size size small. Um, I did consider making chewing my note, but I did consider making the um extra small, but um because the small is finished circumference 120 centimetres, which gives me something like 32 centimetres of positive ease, which is quite a lot. But my two things, I think as per usual for me, my gauge was like ever so slightly tight by like half a stitch or a stitch. Um, so I was like, if I'm between sizes, I should go up. And secondly, I'm worried I'm not going to have enough of the mohair. So Pete bought me four balls of the mohair, so um, 100 grams. Um, and... I think the pattern calls for like 100 to 125 or something. It's one of those range where they put a range. So it's gonna be a bit tight. I, I have got some other pale blue mohair, which um, I thought I could use on the ribbings. Um, if I need, um, <laughs> when I said, we'll just go with it and see how it goes. Uh. Um, sorry, distracted there. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, if I need to substitute some extra mohair, because um, I haven't seen this in Sostra Negrona since for ages, not this shade, I have got some other like pale blue mohair like this, for example, which, no, it's not the same, but if I just used this like on the collar and the ribbing, I might get away with it. So we'll see, might not need to um, employ that tactic, but that's another reason for, um, I was gonna say it's another reason for doing a size up, but it's not, that would have been a reason for doing a size down. You know when you, you decide on your sizing and your gauge and your rationale and stuff, like at the beginning of a project, and then you come to talk about it and it seems like a while ago. That's what just happened then. We'll see. I think I decided that because my gauge was a bit tight, I should size up. And if I needed more mohair, I'd make it work in summary. <laughs> so whip number one. Um, right. And then whip 
Number two, I'm gonna show you in just a second, I'm gonna reset my camera, because there's a bit to chat about. Right, um, so my second whip is a new design -y that I talked a bit about last time. Um, I had ordered some yarn for it and yeah I think I had cast on I had like I had the I had some two by two rib on the collar and I think that was it um there's much more to show now so I was well a while ago last year when I did my stash tour video I realized that I had quite a lot of mohair scraps left from previous projects that were all like in a quite similar colour family um, and I'll show you that colour family right now. There are a few others but these are some of the main players and I did show this last time but um, yeah blues and greens because you can tell my kind of vibe <laughs> when it comes to colours and I had these left from different projects um and I was like oh it'd be good to like to do something with these scraps um what can I do and then I've talked about this with my knitting friends a bit um I slash we are not really into like the traditional scrappy projects I'm not a sock knitter the thought of doing a scrappy blanket just leaves me a bit cold if I'm honest and I don't have loads, I do have other scraps, but my main scraps seem to be mohair scraps. I was like, oh, what can I do? Can I do some kind of like combination of them, use them in some kind of like fade held with a constant base colour or... I just wasn't sure, I was just thinking it through. And then I had an idea about using the scraps for some stripes. And I made this swatch, which was the great um, bumps or no bumps <laughs> debacle of 2022. I think it was just about 2022 at this point. Um, so I used this um, main colour is Bill Kalana uh, Panilla, which I ordered from Maple Tree Yarns and is the same yarn base as Phil Kalana's Peruvian Highland Wool, but just a bit thinner. I think it's thicker, sorry. I think, what's wrong with me? Thinner. I think it's something like 175 meters and 50 grams instead of 100, something like that. Um, but it's exactly the same wool and I really like the Peruvian Highland Wool. So I held this, Vanilla with some drops mohair that I had and given to me um, in the past by Simona from Knit Yarns in like a beige colour. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and made this watch and did some experimenting with mohair stripes. And I experimented with bumps, i.e. pearl bumps. Please focus. Bumps versus no bumps. Bumps versus no bumps. And I couldn't decide which I liked better. So I did what every indecisive person does and put it to Instagram. And Instagram literally couldn't decide either. Like, I'm not joking. I did a poll and when the poll ended, it was 50-50. Not 49-51. Not 47, 53, it was 50, 50. <laughs> I was like, great, <laughs> no one else can decide either. So I thought, <clears throat> right, what I'm gonna do is cast on and just, I knew that I didn't want the stripes to start until under the yoke, once they're joined for the arm, uh, underarms. So I was like, I'm just gonna start knitting and, and see what feels right when I get there. So that's what I did and because I haven't like <laughs> been on Instagram or YouTube that much, got quite a lot done and I posted my progress on Instagram yesterday and it 
thank you so much for such a like lovely response. Everyone was so encouraging. And actually, I had loads and loads of responses and comments of people saying what they liked. And I don't know how many there were in total, a lot. And only two people said they actually preferred the no bumps. Bumps for the win. Um, oh, knock down the tower of various things. So this is <clears throat> what we've got. This is the main colour combo. So this is the vanilla um, in the colour very light grey or very light grey mix or something like that. And this is the drops mohair in beige or light beige or something along those lines. So again, they're not an exact um, tonal match. This is definitely more grey, cooler grey, and this is more like warmer, maybe even with a bit of pink. Um, but they look really nice together. So I think I had this, or some of this, two by two rib collar done. Um, when I last did my podcast. Now we have <laughs> uh, a top-down raglan with a thick six-stitch raglan. And, ta -da! Ooh, that's a bit creased at the bottom, but you get, you get the gist. Here are the stripes. I'll put my picture I put up on Instagram in as well, so you can see better. But essentially, this is the idea. So mohair stripes with pearl bumps and got the pale blue sort of aquamarine colour green. And then next is gonna be, oops, this foresty green, uh, like, yeah, dark green. And then finally this navy blue. So it's going to be a sort of fade as you go down the jumper. That's the back. So yeah, I quite like how it's turning out. As I was doing it, I was like, oh, I'm still not sure about the bumps, no bumps. Like, let me stop that. Yeah, I was like, I'm still not sure, I'm still not sure. But actually, as the pattern has gone on, and I think also when it's blocked, I think I am a fan. Um, that's kind of what we're going for with the two by two rib. It sits quite high, this collar, it sits like, like that. So then the stripes start like sort of just under the bust, like my bust, <laughs> that's weird. My bust finishes like there and then the stripes start. Um, mainly to make the design easier, um, so they could just be continuous stripes once you've um, joined under the arms. But also just, and actually a few people said this without me even like prompting, but a few people said that they didn't think like horizontal stripes over the bust would necessarily be that flattering, or it might like distort things if you like larger bust. So, or chest circumference, so yeah. That's what we've got so far, and I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, it's turned out like I hoped, and I just hope that the few bits that I'm not sure about will like iron out, iron out when I when I block it. Sorry, that's one of the caps in my mask. my light <laughs> light ring box. So yeah, I've just got two. I finished this grey stripe, so I've got two more mohair colour stripes, and there'll be a little bit of grey before the ribbing. So yeah, I'll keep you posted on the progress. But I thought it would look wicked with like, obviously I've gone for like colour family stripes, but it would also look really cool with, I don't know, say you did it totally opposite, like a dark colour like black or dark grey or navy with like, not neon, but you know, like, quite bright coloured stripes. You could do all the stripes the same colours. You could use hand dyed mohair to make speckly stripes. Like, I just thought so many people are gonna have scraps of mohair at home, um, probably in loads of different colours. And I don't know, I for one was like, I'm keen for a project that would use up some scrap of mohair. Um, 
but I'm just not in with like socks or a scrappy blanket or anything that's just not really me so yeah tell me what you think how do you think like you'd put your mark on it in terms of like the stripes would you do them all the same color would you use like monochrome like black and white shades of gray shades of I know I've gone green and blue but you could do like shades of pink couldn't you oh, so many options um I'd also love there to be like a cardigan version of this as well so maybe that's what I'll work on next obviously need to just hold my horses haven't even finished this one yet might not like it but yeah that's 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 where my brain's been um so I hope you like it I don't know what I would call it if I did release it. I'm toying with a name, which I don't think I'll say just yet, but yeah. Watch this space. Right, that's enough about that. But yeah, if you've got any comments or thoughts or questions or anything like that, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Um, people said such nice things yesterday on my Instagram, so. Thank you again for that. Right, so that's my two whips at the minute. I'm trying to like not be monogamous because I think maybe that's not me, but like work on a bit less. So I try and get a bit less overwhelm. I am working on like a long, long-term project, my Eleanor dress by um, Mode at Rowan, which they kind of gifted me the yarn for. Um, because that's knit flat in panels, even though that's not my preferred construction these days, actually is very, very handy for like traveling when you don't want to take a big bulky thing. Cause like a sweater, the more you do of it, at the beginning it's fine, it's quite portable. It's just like neck band on the top of the yoke. But by the time you've got most of the body and some sleeves, it's quite bulky. So this dress is like front panel, back panel, and then sleeves and then you seam everything at the end and add the neckline. So, I can, I'm working on the back panel so I can just fold it up and take it with me like I took it on the plane to Copenhagen, I took it on the train down to London last weekend, um, yeah, so I'll not show you because I showed you before and there's nothing changed, there's just more of it, but um, that's also going on in the background, but yeah, they're my two whips, so just before the end I'll show you some acquisitions um there's a lot like on social media at the moment about like yarn bands and no buy 2023 and that's totally fine I think I buy in moderation anyway and I really enjoyed shopping my stash last year and like have been quite mindful about what I add to it so um I, I'm not trying to justify these acquisitions because I don't have to, but um, I suppose I'm hoping that I can continue to shop my stash, i.e. using up mohair scraps and stuff. But like these two acquisitions are very special in their own ways, as I'll show you. So um, that's kind of where I'm at in terms of why I purchased them or didn't purchase them, that's the case maybe. So <laughs> the first one is um, a beautiful purchase from my trip to Copenhagen in January. So I turned 30 in January. Um, oh, and that reminds me of another acquisition actually. For my 30th birthday, Pete bought me this beautiful notebook, which is like soft leather bound. And then you can like put inserts in you can like add different notebooks if that makes sense and there's a little like thing with pockets and a thing with a zip just like oh my god and the best part of it is that he got it monogrammed with EFH which my initials slash HK on it <laughs> so yeah thanks Pete this is where my notes my podcast and designs and stuff are going to be and it's just lush to have it all in one place and then if I need to replace the notebooks I can but anyway um I went to Copenhagen with um, a small group of my friends from 
primary school because like we're all turning 30 this year and um, so by the time while we were there it was one friend's 30th me and another friend had very recently turned 30 and then our other friend is 30 in the summer so we decided to do like a big trip like city break somewhere um all together to celebrate our birthdays and I hadn't been out of the UK since um since Covid so it was like even bigger sort of deal for me really no 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 can you do that thank you sorry the ring light was about to go <laughs> toppling down um yes yeah, so it was it was fab and no, none of us had ever been to Copenhagen between us we're very fortunate in that we have have been to quite a lot of European cities but this was one place that none of us had been um and I was obviously like so excited because Denmark in general is like knitting mad Copenhagen is meant to have some amazing yarn shops so the trip kind of snuck up on me a bit to be honest I didn't do as much research as perhaps I should have but I was also hyper aware that I was going away with three non-knitters um <clears throat> so I obviously the focus of the trip was not knitting <laughs> let's put it that way so anyway long story short we went to one, I chose one shop to go to um, that wasn't a million miles from where we were staying. I looked up the Knitting for Olive shop because I was like, oh gosh, that's kind of one of the first ones that I thought of. But it was quite far from where we were staying. And my friends wanted to go to this little um, independent jewellery um, designer shop that was on the same street as this shop. So I was like, this is perfect. So we went to, um, I'm probably gonna pronounce this totally wrong, Brunnestrick, Brunnestrick, um, which was amazing, and I'll put some pictures in. I was like, <clears throat> kid in a candy shop is like, it doesn't even do it justice. The only thing I can liken it to is when Pete and I went to Vietnam, we went to, like, when we were in um, Hoi An, we went to a tailor shop and had, like, clothing made, which is, like, one of the amazing things they're known for in Hoi An and Pete wanted a navy suit making and the amount of navy suit material they had just totally overwhelmed him and he just stood there like stunned into silence and couldn't speak and I took the mick out of him at the time and was like oh my god like you lost your mind but honestly that was like me in this shop as soon as we walked in I was just so overwhelmed and I think it's partly because in Manchester I don't have like a local yarn shop like I very rarely go into yarn shops I do most of my shopping online we have like an Abacan which is a general craft store and they sell like they do sell a lot of yarn but it's like very specific brands and it's not really brands that I use a lot like to see all of the sort of Scandi brands of yarn that I buy but not in person was just uh, amazing and like there was just you know, hung up everywhere in the shop were just all these beautiful samples, but of like patterns that I'd either made or wanted to make. It was like a shrine to petite knit, oh my word. Like, and it was just, I mean, even my non-knitter friends were like, wow, this is amazing. And they kept pointing at stuff and being like, can you make that, can you make that, can you make that? And I was like, everyone needs to calm down. And uh, yeah, so they took, they took some pictures of me just standing like in awe, looking at the shelves. It was amazing. Like, you know, some yarn brands I've, I've seen people use and talk about, but I've never like actually seen or touched or held myself. Like Isio is one of them, um, which is Danish, I'm pretty sure. But there was like so many brands that I see online, like in one place. So like there was Isio, there was Chaos Yarn, there was Samnes, there was um, uh, Cislerel, there was... Um, I can't even remember how many others later uh, there was just there was just loads like any any yarn brand that you see all over Instagram it was there um and it was amazing and the lady in the shop was so lovely I'm really sorry I don't know your name but she was just so nice she had a terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit on knitted I think in some Noro and I was just like proper fangirling I was like is that the terrazzo sweater she's like yeah <laughs> bless her she was so so lovely 
and um my friends like there was a big like table with some chairs that I just parked them on and they just sat there chatting and then on attached to the table was um a swift and winder and they just lost their minds at that they were like wow like what does this do and I was explaining to them about like you know winding up hanks and skeins and stuff they were just like whoa so I just sat there playing with that for a bit and it's like two old Danish ladies came in and they were like, are you from England? And like, we love your accents. And they were just chatting away, which allowed me some time to just deal with myself. Anyway, obviously once I got over the initial like, wow, I was like, I have to buy something because I'm here and this will literally hold so many memories and, you know, landmark birthday, blah, blah, blah. And I allowed, I'd said to myself, I would buy like a sweater quantity of yarn. But I hadn't got much further than that in planning and boy, I wish I had because it was like, oh my gosh. So I decided that it was amazing to see all the like commercial yarns there and feel them and be like, oh, so that's what like Alpaca One feels like or wow, those colours are really vivid. But now I've seen them, I probably would have confidence buying them online now. And I was like, I don't use much hand-dyed yarn, but when I made my sweater number 11 using my hand-dyed mohair from Brea Yarns, it was amazing and I love that sweater so much. And I was like, I'm here seeing some hand-dyed yarns, mainly by Sislaville, and I was like, it won't be the same looking at these online and they might not have the same ones. So I decided that that's what I wanted to buy. And then bless her, the lady in the shop, like, for most of the, the dye lots and the colourways, there was only like two skeins out. And I was like, is that because there's only two skeins out or is that because that's all you have? And it just wasn't going to be enough for sweater quantity. So I thought, oh my God. So I like dithered loads and loads and loads and was just like, oh gosh, I really want to buy some, but I don't want to just buy something that's not enough to like actually make something out. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. I found very, very beautiful yarn, and I'll show you right now. Um, let me just get the right, oops, right ones. Okay, so I found these. Ah, aren't they beautiful? Literally. Um, I've definitely found my, like, Achilles heel. Like, hand-dyed yarn didn't used to do much for me, but hand-dyed mohair, <laughs> now we're talking. But yeah, just stunning. I mean, these two skeins are quite different, but these are both the apple flower colourway. So as you can see, they're like cream, very subtle sort of like pistachio greens, hints of like pink, but like corally pink. And then that one there has even got a bit of like grey blue, um yeah they're just stunning but yeah they are quite different right so sadly she only had these two and I was like oh no that's not enough because these are 420 meters because they're 50 gram skeins so I was like I just don't know if that's going to be definitely enough and there was no third skein that matched like this or really any of the colourways that I liked. And then I saw this hanging like nearby and I was like, oh my God, that's stunning. And it's not entirely dissimilar from these. Like I know they're not the same. Like, yes, I can see that. But they are not dissimilar. And because this and this are actually quite different skeins anyway, and this one has a bit of the blue in the top. I was like, do you know what? That could actually work. So this one is Candy Clouds. Um, and because I'm going to be holding them with a base colour anyway, I think it will work. And yeah, I'll make something incredible. So I need your help. I want to make a garment, a sweater, hello, or a cardigan, that is going to allow this yarn to like sing and shine um so I think that means it needs to be like stocking it mainly and I just wondered if anyone had any pattern suggestions I've thought of a few so there's like the Monday sweater by Petite Knit um there's the oh, how am I going to pronounce this 
E-U-N. Do you pronounce that? Ewan? Ewan? Not sure. By November Knits, which is like a stunning, like, stockinette top, but then with like a quite a high split hem and rib. Um, I'll put pictures in, obviously. Um, Semper Sweater by my friend Sophie. Um, either the um, sweater number 14 v-neck or is it the Harlow v-neck by Kadri? Um, something like that is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Any other suggestions for these beautiful, beautiful skeins? Um, yep, they are very beautiful. And yeah, if you look particularly like there at the back, I don't think you can, like at the at the bottom, like that could definitely all be from the same dye lot. So there we are. That is one of my acquisitions. And then the other one is also super, super special um, because it was so kindly gifted by my wonderful friend, Simona, who I know I bang on about a lot. But she really is. Hello. howling for no reason. Um, yeah, she really is amazing. So Simona owns knit.co.uk, a amazing yarn website. And when I say I buy most of my yarn online, I mean, I buy most of it from her website. <laughs> she stocks all the goodies um, and her like knowledge and um, desire to help people making their choices, suggesting alternatives, is amazing and her postage service is still like one of the quickest even with postal strikes she somehow manages it so yeah love Simona and then recently I think in October or November she opened a real life knit shop in Teddington so um just outside of London near Twickenham and obviously I really wanted to go but it was not geographically near, like I can't just pop in. So I was a bit, a bit sad about it and like really wanted to go and support her. And for Christmas, I bought my mum um, a voucher for Simona's shop, either, well, oh, yeah, online. I thought she was going to spend it online. Um, and then it turned out that we were going down to London for like a family um, get together last weekend. And the family lunch was on the Sunday. We were going down Friday evening and there was like nothing really planned for the Saturday. My dad and my brother went, were going to a football match. Pete was, um, had a few bits and bobs he wanted to do. So it's gonna be like me and my mum. And I was like, we could, we could, we could go. So I kept it a secret. And I told her that we were going somewhere secret and she just needed to bring herself. And so we went to Waterloo Station and got on a train and then she realised it was a Teddington but that meant nothing to her. She was like, what's in Teddington? What's in Teddington? So we potted down the high street and only when we got outside the shop and I stopped and she was like, what? And I like looked, nodded forwards and she was like, ah, we're in Simona's shop. And it was amazing. And I met Simona in real life for the first time because if like we zoom a lot but I've not actually like met her met her um because she couldn't come to Caroline's wedding in the end and it was so fun like I was so excited that I only took one photo and it's a bit rubbish I'll insert it for <laughs> everyone's enjoyment um yeah I actually did take another photo Simone took it for me of me and my mum with our yarn purchases but Annoyingly, I took it through Instagram and then Instagram deleted it. So that's lost forever. But um, it was so good. We spent like quite a long time in the shop um, and it was so nice to see like it be quite busy. Like Simona was amazing with all the customers. It was really funny because at one point a lady came in and started talking about Laura Penrose and I was like, ah, oh, that's my friend. Um, and yeah, it was just great. And it was so nice to like, help my mum spend her voucher because she wanted to buy some, she wants to make a, a cumulus 
tea by Petite Knit and she has been wanting to buy some cotton merino for the Simona to make it and every time she's like I think I'm gonna go on Simona's website and spend the voucher I've been like trying to like delay her doing that because I knew I wanted to take her in person um so it was nice to see like the colours in person and her alternatives and then she also bought some Anina I think because uh, Simona suggested a beautiful pattern to her uh, Lena Ho Home Sam so pattern um I can't remember which one it is, but one of her peacock patterns, the sweaters, like the high neck, um, which my mum absolutely loved. So she, yeah, she spent her voucher. And then I was pottering around and I was like, well, I definitely want to buy something. Again, a bit like Copenhagen. I was like, I'm here. It'll have memories. It'll have significance. Like I buy from Simona a lot, but like, you know, this is like an experience sort of thing. And I couldn't decide what I wanted. And I was like looking around and I kept being drawn to a few of her yarns that were like cobalt blue. Because as everyone will know, I had a love affair, have on, an ongoing love affair with like bright, bright green, grass, juicy green, as of the first cardigan sample. And my love affair also extends to bright, bright, bright electric cobalt blue, but I don't have any yarn in that color and I've been hankering after some for ages. So I was looking at a few of her yarns, because when you're there and you can just see them in person, like their true colors is just great. And I happened upon this. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, just look at that color. It's blowing out a little bit, one sec. There we go. So it's a bit bright on this side, but you get the gist. It is boom, boom electric blue and super soft because this is Samner's um, alpaca wool or alpaca wool um, and you can just see the alpaca fibres there that are just going to make this delightful. Um, so this is so so soft. I was stuck between this and the Peer Gint by Samner's also in this colour. And in the end I went for this because it's just so soft. And I was like, what if it doesn't, what if it doesn't work for me? What if it doesn't stand the test of time? What if it pills? And Simona was like, what the hell are you going to be doing to this knitwear? <laughs> I was like, yeah, good point. Um, but yes, this colour, ah, I just love it. With my hair, I just think it's going to be grand. Um, so this is 50 grams is 100 metres, which is similar to something like Peruvian. Um, and not too dissimilar to Peer Gint. So like any pattern that's like written for that kind of yarn weight, I think will be will be grand. Or maybe I'll use it to think about another design of my own. I'm not sure yet, but I just know that I want like a boom electric blue sweater and it's gonna be amazing. And then to top that all off, I just like finally decided after much deliberation and that's what I wanted took it all to the counter and Simona literally wouldn't let me pay which was very naughty but very 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 generous and very much appreciated so thank you so much I fully fully intended to pay for my purchase like we went there to support her shop and she was like no you can't pay no it's a, it's a gift for her which was just like more than more than generous so thank you so much and I cannot wait to make something super funky um so yeah that's us I think um yeah I think that's all I had written in my my notebook to talk about um oh really enjoyed this one actually it was really like rust I wasn't nervous at the beginning but I was really rusty as you could probably tell but I hope I feel like I've settled it back into it I hope it comes across that way um whenever I like haven't done a podcast ages I'm like oh god no and then I just don't make the time to do it and then whenever I do one I'm like I love doing that that was great so um I hope you enjoy watching this those who've watched it thank you um I think it's a seasonal thing we were talking about this in our knitting group but like What's the general consensus on knitting podcasts? Do people enjoy them as much as they used to? Is it another form of content overwhelm? If it is, how do you manage it? Like I have to say, I just watch a select few now because there's so many and 
I can't keep up with all the ones that I used to watch. Um, but like, yeah, I enjoy filming it when I actually do. But do people still enjoy watching them? Is it the kind of content that people want to see? Is the format what people want to see? Should I change things up a bit? Like, I'd really appreciate honest feedback. Um, and yeah, we'll see. I feel like I've lost my mojo with filming and with watching a bit, but I'm just wondering, is that not just me because I know that it's happened to others, but was it a bit of a seasonal thing and it'll come back? Or has the landscape changed in terms of like knitting social media? I don't know, tell me your thoughts. Um, I'd be very intrigued and grateful. So I'm gonna leave it there. The cats have now settled back down, one is in bed, one is looking out the window. Hope the disruption wasn't too irksome um compared to what I thought might happen that wasn't too bad at all so if you were annoyed by it sorry but it could have been a heck of a lot worse <laughs> so have a brilliant rest of your day whatever you're up to and I will see you next time bye